everyone, welcome back to my channel. Did you guys watch the Oscars on Sunday? Well, I did. It was definitely quite interesting this year, of course, due to the pandemic. There were two locations, the Dolby Theater and also Union Station. But they had the red carpet and everybody was looking great. My favorite dresses I seen this year at the Oscars was definitely Zendaya. That necklace was gorgeous, but so expensive. Um, Amanda Seyfried. Regina King's outfit, very beautiful Valentino, and the talented Maria Bakalova from the board film. She was so funny and so entertaining. And this dress on her looks so elegant. I would say Maria Bakalova and Amanda Seyfried had that old Hollywood glam look and I loved it. Just my opinion though. Personally, if I had an opportunity to wear one of those dresses, I would pick uh, Maria Bakalova's. Which outfits did you like at this year at the Oscars? Let me know in the comments below. Now, let's jump right into the nominees and the winner. I want to congratulate the winners and nominees at this year at the Oscars. I knew that Nomadland, Mang, Promising Young Woman, Soul, Marini's Black Bottom, and Another Round would win this year. Mang had the best cinematography, definitely for sure, and Soul was the best anime film. Yes, I totally agree. I really enjoyed watching that film. Personally, I thought that either Chadwick Boseman or Sidney Young would probably win for Best Actor. I do recall several years ago when I was working at the Toronto International Film Festival, this man was from California, he had a suit on. He's like, kid, that's Hollywood for ya. <laughs> I will not forget those words. I stuffed the ballot box at the Oscars. The Oscar goes to a red guy. <laughs> so true what he said. I don't know his name, but I can tell he works in the industry. He had that old time Hollywood accent. There was ups and downs in the film industry, but now things are starting to slowly improve, which is great. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences has over 9,000 members and things are slowly changing. There's definitely going to be more diversity, which is great. I want to congratulate Tyler Perry and the Motion Picture television fund for their Jean Herschel Humanitarian Award. Both speeches were so moving and so inspirational. I'm so glad to see more diversity in television series and movies, especially Bridgerton. So today I'm reacting to one of my favorite TV shows growing up as a kid, The Critic. It's about a TV show host named Jay Sherman. He is single, going bald, and has his own TV show called Coming Attractions where he interviews a lot of the Hollywood A-listers and they have these interesting movies very fun parodies. The way that he does his reviews about movies are so hilarious. He definitely gives interesting ratings as a critic. And these are several movie parodies I'll be reacting to. So y'all, let's jump right into The Critic. The Critic. Who's calling, Jay? Hello? Jay, this is your mother. Your father and I are taking you out of our will. We feel you already have enough money. Oh, yes. Wow. <laughs> this is one of my favorite intros. Nice calm jazz music, and it's funny too. That kind of resembles him a little bit. <laughs> What's wrong? I'm 36 years old. I'm lonely. My hair comes out of a spray can. You know, I had to go on camera without this stuff. Let the world see me as I really am. <laughs> Empty. Oh, I'm bald and ugly. Get more. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jay Sherman, and this is Coming Attractions. Tonight, I'll be reviewing Home Alone 5. My favorite home. movie. And he's only 23. Oh! <laughs> but first, 
Let's start with Arnold Schwarzenegger's latest film, Rabbi P.I. It's the story of a Chicago cop who goes undercover as a Hasidic Jew. Keep land, Rabbi. Sorry, that's not kosher. <laughs> right. Schwarzenegger. If you are a real rabbi, circumcise this child. <laughs> Nagila, baby. Because I love you people, I won't force you to watch the musical number. Well, maybe just a little. Uh, dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. I made you <laughs> a play. Hey, anyway, to get to the part of the show you like the best and I find humiliating, on the shamometer, this film rates an absolute zero. Burn. <laughs> and cut. True. Ah. <laughs> uh, this new stuff feels great. Where'd you get it? Some kids were painting King Dork on your car with it. Why the hell do you have to be so critical? I'm a critic. <laughs> no, your job is to rate movies on a scale from good to excellent. <laughs> what like? That's what good's for. Mr. Phillips, we go on in five seconds. I own this network, boy. Just put up that picture of me on a horse. Look, this isn't art. It's just mindless pablum for losers. He's a football players. coach. <laughs> that works in the film industry. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, you're fabulously wealthy. You're a world-class athlete. You were great in bed last night. How does that feel? I have no one to envy. I envy you having me to envy. We're back with star poop. Let's welcome a young actress. <laughs> His first film opens next month, Valerie Fox. Now, I must confess, I haven't seen your movie yet. Well, let's not talk about the movie. Let's talk about you. Ah, my favorite son. <laughs> he likes her. I'm your biggest fan. Oh, I have no fans. Most of my viewers are drunken frat boys who like to make fun of me. Hey, look, <laughs> he's picking his nose. <laughs> it's really simple. I find smart men very sexy. And you are the most intelligent man on television. God. Would you like to have dinner with me? Oh, I couldn't. You're an actress. I'm a critic. There's an insatiable line between us. Uh, I mean, invisible. There's an invisible line between us. I wonder, oh. though, is it possible for a movie critic to date a celebrity? Right, I'll have dinner with I've you. always wondered that. Can we have a serious discussion of your film? I think that's what our audience is here for. Hey, look, she's drinking a beer. Oh, this really stinks. Oh. I'm sorry, <laughs> you send me on these talk shows and tell me to be some sort of femme fatale. I think it's all pretty silly myself. I know how it is. I always have to look my sexiest. That's why I'm wearing these tight size 42 pants. <laughs> now, Valerie, Jay Sherman. The new film, Kiss of Death, is being compared to Basic Instinct. Did you compare yourself to Sharon Stone? I find comparing actresses very demeaning. Don't you? <laughs> Hey, Mr. Wow, what did you cost the kids did a good ball. job, uh, King Dork. <laughs> King Dorkenheiser of Finland. I thought Finland was a constitutional democracy. Just park the car. Oh, Mr. Sherman. I have said for you, the very best diamond in the house. Just perfect for the schmoozing. Conan O'Brien is going to kill the scum of the Oh, great. Oh, He's yes. Find the best seat for the next A lister. Brief, more like turkey too long. <laughs> Even Satan himself would love this angel hair pasta. It's a goodbye. And so, goodbye from Mr. Good Guy, Gene Shalit. Gene Shalit. Yes, I was a model. Yes, I was a beauty queen. Yes, I dated Donald Trump. Oh, yeah. What are you what doing? What the heck? <laughs> oh, I'm sneaking a peek at your McGuffies. We saw your boobs. In the movie that we saw, we saw your boobs. Hello, I'm Jay Sherman, and this is Coming Attractions. Tonight, we'll be reviewing A Few More Good Men, starring Jack Nicholson, with co-stars Christian Slater and William Devane. <laughs> 
I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. I can <laughs> handle the truth. The truth is you talk like me, you act like me. You don't have an original bone in your body. That's a freaking lie. Could the stenographer read that last part back? What am I, a freaking minor bird? Yeah. <laughs> we'll also be looking at Tim Burton's latest film, The Nightmare Before Hanukkah. <laughs> Excuse me, is this Hanukkah town? No, it's the Vatican, and I'm Pope Shlomo. Oi. <laughs> Tell us about your film, Mr. Wonka. We have a fascinating kind of candy that turns wicked children into giant blueberries. Hmm, where do you go? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> For years, we broadcasters have butchered old movies. We colorize them, we dub them lines like, frankly, Scarlet, I don't give a ham, and drama ham? you magnificent bus stop. But we've never been able to make movies better. Now we can, through the magic of Philip's vision. Philip's vision? Casablanca. Rick, the love of your life. Louis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Rick, I changed my mind. I'm coming back to you. And I'm here too. <gasps> no. What the? <laughs> Rick has got his gal. And new way is his pal. They execute the spy. <laughs> Stay tuned, follow the local news. And Magnum P.I. I'll show you how I'm fixing up. One flew over to Cuckoo's Nest. Hey, Chief, how'd you get this pillowcase so freaking white? I use Phillips brand detergent. You have to be <laughs> cuckoo not to use it. I use it on my whites and my colors. Nurse Ratchet? Call me Brandy. Chief, get down with nurse. Make them bacon. Mm, I'll let you make your own movie. Ah, hell, you could even star in it. I know just the project. Goodfellas 2. Aw, oh, man, we gotta bury this thing. It smells terrible. Hi, guy. Mamma me. <laughs> Tom Hanks in Forrest Gump 2. Gump Harder. Mr. President? I'm Forrest Gump, owner of Bubba Gump Shrimp. Shrimp? Bubba uh, Gump? Like shrimp. <laughs> shrimp cocktail, shrimp scampi, shrimp puffs, shrimp kebab, peanut butter and shrimp sandwiches, shrimp milkshakes, shrimp wine, count shrimpula cereal, and blueberry what pie the? with scoop of vanilla ice cream, a little brown sugar, and some shrimp. You sure lack shrimp, Mr. President. Did you say shrimp? I love shrimp. Shrimp cocktail, <laughs> shrimp scampi, shrimp. Pops, oh no, he's gonna say it all over again. <laughs> I'd like to sleep with your wife, and I'm prepared to pay six dollars. Last time you paid us a million. I know. At the time, I was worth one million and six dollars. Oh, well, Mr. Wilson! What do you want? <laughs> no! Reviewing Tom Cruise's sequel <laughs> to Interview with a Vampire entitled A Few Good Monsters. Son, I hear music. I don't remember giving permission for a party. Well, uh, Dad, uh. <laughs> Monster Mash. He's doing the mash. Do the Monster Mash. Five minutes to Monsters. Five minutes to Monsters. Gassy Herman. Gassy Herman. Our movie in first class today is the sequel to Rayman, entitled Snowman. Now, I want to warn you. Your brother is a little, uh, special. Five minutes to Northern Exposure. Gassy Moose. Gassy Moose. Las Vegas. Hottest city in America. Definitely melted. Very bad. Very bad. 
Hey, the people who gave us Tom Cruise as a vampire now bring us Al Pacino in Scent of a Wolfman. Who gets the raw dead goat? That would be me. <laughs> now, come on, Charlie. I want to get a drink. Al Pacino? <laughs> now, let's get some exercise. Tonight is a sequel to Little Women, Little Men, starring the littlest men in Hollywood, Michael J. Fox, Dudley Moore, and Joe Pesci. <laughs> Look at this, I'm here with the Keebler Elves. Wow, you seem awfully hostile. You should see a shrink. <laughs> shrink. <laughs> oh, you think I'm funny? Do I amuse you? Do I make he you laugh? He is last? funny. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Pesci's oh, hilarious. Shots, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, God, I kill myself. Hey, look, it's Gary Coleman. <gasps> and Eastwood returns as Dirty Harry in Beverly Hills Robo Canine Cop and a Half 2. Listen, Callahan, your partners have a way of dying on you. So I got you a new rookie, fresh from the academy. Hi. That's a new one on me. All right, Callahan, I've got some new partners for you. A woman, a cute little kid, an ugly old dog, a dinosaur, and a leprechaun. I'll be your lucky charm. <laughs> lucky charm. <laughs> Swell. Now look, you don't like me, and I don't like you. But we're in this together. Any questions? Can I go party? For the last time, no. You think you got problems? I'm partnered with a pig, an alien, Siamese twins, a sofa, and a second-rate mime. Hey, I'm stuck in a box. I can't get... <laughs> One thing they just keep on exploding. <laughs> Yanu Reeves and Christian Slater in Star Trek Generation X. Space. Big deal. All right, you two. Who wrote Beavis and Butthead rule on the back of my skull? <laughs> Not us, man. <laughs> hey, aren't you the dudes from the TV show? You know, that space thing? Will you please try to stay in character? When will people stop wow. going to Star Trek movies? <laughs> Maybe. They when were you using see this a William Shatner's reference. Musical number. <laughs> Raindrops keep falling on my head. My feet are too big for my bed. Reviewing Keanu Reeves in Speed Reading. All right, Hotshot, you think you're so smart? Let's see you read this book. Bogus. If you read under 50 Bogus. words a minute, this book explodes. <laughs> <Dylan's> Ready? <laughs> Begin. One fish, two, oh no, two, two. Bogus, two, dude, it's gonna explode. Oh, Red. It's fish, you idiot! Fish! <laughs> Dude, now I lost my place. <laughs> that was not a clip. That was the entire movie. Sweetheart, have you seen Timmy, Becky, and Alex? You're gonna be really mad at me. Oh no, <gasps> what did you do? Oh my time? goodness! Honey, <laughs> I remember this. I laminated the kids. <laughs> the I shrunk the kids. Starring Kevin Costner my and favorite the movie. Three tenors. <laughs> This guy can't carry a tune. <laughs> hey, fellas, I think he's dead. <laughs> what the? <laughs> this is crazy. But this well, it's people, hilarious. They weren't able to get Jamie Lee Curtis, so they had to settle for her dad, Tony. What the heck? I used to dance like this for Kirk Douglas. Oh, ya <laughs> The latest from Arnold Schwarzenegger. I am Frau Doubtfire. No, you're not. You're my husband in a dress. I am so a woman. Look at my fake bosoms. They are really grenades. <laughs> Send me back. Well, what'd you think? What the? <laughs> that was hilarious. 
not just a sweet movie, it also teaches a valuable lesson. That film shocked him. Machi, machi. Okay, this is an it reference. One more. Step. That red balloon. That balloon becomes the dead balloon. I could not have foreseen that. Mm. <laughs> we can't afford to have that balloon fall into the wrong hands. I don't know who's full of more hot air, General. That balloon or you? Ah, it's ridiculous. With the latest from Belgian kickboxer Jean Paul Le Pope, Bag Boys in the Hood. Hey, you're not my regular bag boy. <laughs> uh, what kind of body bag do you want? Pepper or plastic? You're the nine liberal judges who outlawed unreasonable session seizure. Suter made us do it. You better lock the doors, because we'll be rewriting <laughs> some laws tonight. I'll look at films Oscar passed over, like Children of a Lesser Godzilla. Classic. <laughs> Godzilla's not so bad. He just cannot hear you. <laughs> he says he wants to meet all of you for breakfast. Oh! Wow, he can understand Godzilla. <laughs> or what that eats you? Oh well. Then there's the 1970s sci-fi classic, Planet of the Dog. Oh my gosh! <laughs> we dogs evolved and have become Planet of the Apes. To you humans in every way. Doctor Zeus, quit sniffing my butt. So sorry, I'll just rub up against the human's leg. Very good. Quit rubbing my leg, you bloody Bowser! <laughs> Here's the latest film from the people who brought you Howard's End, an E.M. Forster story called The Tea Cozy. This film gets my highest rating, 7 out of 10. I want you to have my tea cozy. I know it's fallen into disrepair, but you can make it grand again. Dear Mrs. Dimwitty, I shall treasure it forever. Come, tea cozy. Find comfort in my bosom one last time. It's just a ratty old tea cozy. <laughs> <laughs> tea cozy are cool. What the devil is a tea cozy? And why aren't you prancing? Don't worry, I have a big joke coming up. So run, don't mosey to the tea cozy. It really hit the spot. <laughs> where's the joke? I know we're on the air, but where's the joke? Uh, well, it was really more of a bone move. Spike Lee's newest, most controversial film, <laughs> F, the story of Malcolm Forbes. Plymouth Rock didn't land on us. We landed on Plymouth Rock. Bula Bula. Jim Carrey as our 16th president in Abe Lincoln, Pet Detective. Four score and seven years ago, and now a rib. What the? <laughs> so oh my gosh, that was crazy. America really thinks it's funny, a talking butt. <laughs> wow. <laughs> a talking butt. <laughs> he looks like a football coach. <laughs> Jay Sherman's boss. <laughs> Who are you? My name is Monroe, James Monroe, and he has a taste of the Monroe Doctrine. <laughs> Welcome to the era of good feelings. Oh, James. Tonight is the new politically correct version of James Bond on his or her majesty's secret service. Well, darling, thanks to my efforts, Blofeld's army will now admit homosexuals, the blind, and midgets. Die, Bond! Die! Uh, <laughs> Mini Bond me! Sure. Ah. Silly me. <laughs> James, please, you know how I hate secondhand smoke. Maybe I could light your fire. Well, before we begin, I need a list of all the women you've been with for the last 20 years. Mm, let's see. 
There's Pussy Galore, Holly Goodhead, plenty of tool, and of course, Octopussy. Uh, maybe we should just... Octopus? Cuddle my ass. That's sexual harassment and I don't have to take it. James Bond will return in Dr. No Means No. <laughs> no means no. Tonight I'll be reviewing Disney's latest feature, The Cockroach King, starring Howard Stern. Cockroach King? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Okay, that's a nightmare. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Behold your king. That's right, I'm your new king. What do you think of that? Okay. Hey, baby, show me your thorax. <laughs> that is just Our beyond. Alcoholism entitled DT, the drunken terrestrial. DT? <laughs> I love you. I really, really, really love you. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know when I did that. Gee, I don't think we should do this right now. I fly better when I've had a few. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh. Now let's take a look at the new musical from Francis Ford Coppola, Apocalypse Wow. I'll be do. I'm Colonel Kurtz. Fat and bald like old <laughs> friend Let me do a hula dance To shake the egg rolls from my pants <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of food <laughs> He's not so bad He's really just an odd man And I shave my head like Dennis Rodman He's a god man. It was a remake of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, starring Lisa Marie Presley and Michael. It does have a catchy tune, though. <laughs> Lisa Marie, honey, who's your new girlfriend? He's my husband. <gasps> now, honey. No. Just like whipped cream and pork chops. Here's your pork chops and whipped cream, King. Thank you. Thank you very much. Daddy, you don't like Michael just because his skin's a different color. No, it isn't. <laughs> America's favorite comedian stars in a remake of a classic film, Rebel Without a Cosby. You see, the knife is a good I, thing. Oh my gosh, no Cosby, not, really? <laughs> yeah, but it's not so good for pointing at me, the car, see? <laughs> you should get yourself a spoon and fill it with jello pudding. <laughs> I haven't made any friends since that chauffeur I hired. <laughs> Hold, slow down. You're going too fast. I got better things to do than driving a crotchety old woman like you around. From now on, my name isn't Hulk, it's Malcolm H. And when the revolution comes, you will not be spared. Aya. He was my best friend. Tonight we will review the latest documentary from Ken Burns, who brought us the Civil War and baseball. It's a new 29-hour epic entitled Electric Football. Here's a clip from episode 17. This game sucks. <laughs> game sucks. <laughs> if you ask me, electric football is a metaphor for America. Always shaking, always noisy, never really knowing where it's going. <laughs> Wait a minute. America's nothing like electric football. It's just a stupid game that doesn't even work. Get that camera off me. You heard me. <laughs> Get your documentary and make a butt out of here. It's Field of Dreams 2 with Kevin Costner. If you build it, they will come. Wow, Babe Ruth. Hey, where can a fella get a hooker around here? Uh, oh my, my God! <laughs> Where's the nearest clan meeting? Wow, Billy! Martin, oh my gosh! My idol. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll be reviewing. Tony okay, that Curtis was crazy. The bad news Mets. <laughs> All right, which one of you threw that firecracker at the little girl? You're off the team. 
All right, I'm making a lineup. Who's got to go to court today? You're off the team. <laughs> now, who impregnated my daughter? Oh, wow. Marvelous. Today, I consider myself <laughs> that was the hilarious. luckiest guy in the whole wide world. Lou, me and the boys have been working on a cure. We call it Lou Gehrig's oil. <gasps> oh my gosh. Strength. Return. No. Lou Gehrig. Don't take that vaccine. You should not have done that. Hey, Lefty, pass me a fat one. X-ray, X-ray, depression over. And Bill Cosby born. And thanks to you, Bambino, <laughs> I'll live to see his warm, unthreatening comedy. Well, that's a clip from the new remake of Prime. The beginning of steroids. The video changed the ending because <laughs> test audiences thought this one was nicer. Well, let me tell you, life is not all happy endings, and you're mature enough to know the truth. We'll be right back. Watching the critic definitely brought back a lot of good memories, and definitely seeing these. Movie parodies were so hilarious. John Lovitz and Nancy Cartwright were great in this TV series. And actually, I found out something really cool. I did not know that Hans Zimmer was actually in charge of the music theme for this TV series. No wonder the music sounds so good. I really enjoyed it. The moral of this TV series shows that being a critic is a lot of work. You gotta be original, creative. At the same time, have fun, love what you're doing. Because the audience will totally see that you have the passion for your craft. What is your favorite episode of The Critic? Let me know in the comments below. I'm your host, Anika Chung, and I'll see you next time on my next motion picture or trailer review. Love yourself always, and remember, be excellent to each other. All right, guys, see you at the next picture. Cheers. That is a wrap. Cheers. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. Never be afraid to talk about bad movies. You can always give suggestions on what they can do better for the next film the power of social media. <laughs>